we're now going to look at an NMOS inverter. So the NMOS technology only includes N-type devices. So you can see here we've got two NMOS transistors. So this is set up as an inverter. Now what we'll do is we call this transistor at the top the load transistor and the transistor at the bottom the drive transistor. And we're going to analyse each of these transistors in turn and see exactly what how they're operating and whereabouts they're operating and what the voltage levels are. So we're going to start off with this one here and this is the enhancement load. So the, the load transist transistor is an enhancement NMOS. So the first thing is that the gate is going to be connected to this 5 volt rail. So we can see that's the gate. Now it's an NMOS, so the charge carriers are electrons. Electrons travel from a low voltage to a high voltage. So that's the low voltage side to the high voltage. So the electrons are traveling in this direction. So they travel from the source to the drain. So this must be the source and this must be the drain. So let's analyze this. We've got our VGS, V gate to the source. Well, the V gate is five volts and the V source is, well, the source here is this point here, which is just the output voltage. So that's going to be 5 minus V out. The voltage from drain to source, well, the drain voltage is 5 volts and the source voltage is V out. So it's going to be 5 minus V out. The threshold voltage, it's an NMOS device, so it's going to be 1 volt. So our VGS minus VT is going to be our 5 minus V out minus the value of 1, which is 4 minus V out. Now we're going to take the VGS minus VT and we go through our usual three checks. We check to see whether it's cut off or whether it's running in a linear or a saturation region. Now it's going to be cut off if the VGS minus VT is less than or equal to zero. So that is if uh, the V out is greater than or equal to four. So as soon as this goes up beyond four volts, then this device here is going to cut off. So if it isn't above 4 volts and the device isn't cut off, then the current is going to be running in the linear or the saturation region. So run in the linear region if our VGS minus VT is greater than or equal to VDS. So that is our 4 minus V0 is greater than or equal to our, our VDS, which is, is 5 minus V0. And that's not going to be the case because if we put a value in for V0, so V0 is 1, then you would have 4 minus 1 which would be 3 and you would be saying 3 is greater than 5 minus 1 which is 4 so you would be saying 3 is greater than 4 which is incorrect so it's not running in the linear region so we we can check the saturation region so 4 minus v0 is going to be less than or equal to 5 minus v0 so that's correct it is actually running in the saturation region so it means that this device here is going to be turned off whenever this value here goes to a value of 5 volts. Otherwise, it's going to be running in the saturation region. So how does that help us here? Well, let's imagine we were to take this device here and we were to have a low input in this device. So if this device is low, it means that the device is off. So when the gate is low in an NMOS device, the device is off, it's, it's cut off, it's not carrying any current. So if this is cut off, it means that there's no current flowing down through here. And any current that flows will flow down through along this route here. So let's say, for example, we were to then say we put a little capacitor in here. It would mean at this point here, we just charge up. So it would be running in the saturation region and it would charge up to a value of 4 volts and once it got to the value of 4 volts it means this device here would also be cut off and we would have a 4 volt sitting on the output so it means that the out if the input here is a, a low input then the output is going to be a, a high output but we're not going to get 5 volts at the output, we're only going to get 4 volts, but that'll do, we can live with that and we could say that if the input then is a low voltage, okay, so 
some low voltage. We don't know what it is at the moment, but let's say the input is some low voltage. Then the output, so the input is low. Then the output is going to be a value of 4 volts. So this looks like it's we're halfway there to creating an inverter. When the input is low, the output goes to high, which is a 4 volt high, as opposed to the 5 volt high, which we get in a CMOS inverter. So let's look at the other part of it. Let's look at the drive section and let's look and see what happens whenever the input voltage here goes high and we'll see what we get for the output for a low voltage. So let's look now what happens whenever we put a high voltage in at the input. Now, we know now that the high voltage isn't going to be a 5 volts. The high voltage is only going to get to 4 volts. But that's enough for us. So the high input would be our 4 volts. But let's look at this device here first of all. We've got the gate here. Now, the again, the electron flow is from the low voltage to the high voltage. So the electron flow is in this direction. So that means that the low voltage side is the source and the high voltage side is the drain. So that's gate, source and the drain. So if we look through at this transistor, we can see that our V gate to source, that's the gate to the source, is the input voltage VI. And we can say the V drain to the source is the output voltage VO. And it's an NMOS device, so the threshold is 1 volt. We then go ahead and we can look at VGS minus VT. So the VGS minus VT is going to be our VN minus the VT, and the VT is 1, so that's VN minus 1. So we can take this and we can again check the three possibilities, the same as we did above. So it's going to be cut off if VN minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. So that is uh, VN is less than or equal to 1. So that means that this device will be cut off whenever the VN is less than or equal to 1. So that means that in this essence here, we can think about the input low voltage and the input low voltage will have to be less than 1. So what we can do is we can assume or we can choose an input low voltage and we'll choose an input low voltage being half the threshold voltage, which will be 0.5 volts. But we'll get back to that just in a minute. So the linear, it's in a linear region if our Vn minus 1 is greater than or equal to our Vds, which is V out. So that's one equation there. And it's in the saturation region if Vn minus 1 is less than or equal to V out. Okay, so at this case here is uh, not going to occur because we've said that our Vn is going to be a high voltage, which is 4 volts. So that would be a case of 4 minus 1, which is a value of 3 volts. And we'd be saying that 3 volts is less than V out, but the V out is a voltage, which is a low voltage. And we've said we'll actually accept half a volt for V out. So it means that this case here, 3 is not less than a half. So it's not in the saturation region, it's in fact in this linear region. So that means that this device here with a high input of 4 volts is running a current down 3 through here in the linear region. So this device is on. But this device here is also on and it's running in the saturation region. So then the problem exists is how do we ensure that we get this voltage to be at a low enough voltage. That is when both of these devices are on when this is high, we need to drop the four and a half volts across this device and then half a volt across this device here. Now we're able to do that by choosing the width to length ratio of this device and the width to length ratio of this device. So in effect, by choosing the width to length ratio, we're in effect creating a potential divider and we're going to divide the voltage across these two devices, but we're going to divide them in the correct ratio. So in order to work out how to do that and how to get the right width to length ratios, what we have to do is we're going to have to equate both of these currents. So there's going to be a saturation current for this device 
and there's going to be a linear current for this device. So let's go on the next page and we'll write down both of these current equations and we'll put in our voltage high, which will be 4 volts, and we'll be able to put in our voltage low, which is going to be 0.5 volts. And then we can do a bit of a uh, movement of that uh, equation and we can transpose that equation and we can get the correct width to length ratios which will allow this device to work as an inverter. So with the input being at 4 volts which is a high voltage, the output we want that to be at a low voltage which is 0.5 volts. Now when that is the case then both of the transistors, that is the drive transistor and the load transistor are both on. So we want to make sure we drop the right voltage across each of them. And we can do that by equating the currents. So the current in the drive transistor is going to be the linear current here, which is going to be our VGS minus VT times VDS, which in this case is VN minus 1 times V out, minus the VDS squared, which is V out squared up in 2. The load transistor is in saturation. This is the saturation current for the load transistor. Again, it's going to be the VGS minus VT. In this instance, it's 4 minus V out squared. And of course, this one's beta L up in 2, and that's just times beta drive. Now, if we then put in the values for the input voltage and the output voltage, then the input is going to be the 4 volts, which is the high, and the output voltage is 0.5 volts. So we put the values into this equation and we can multiply out the equation. When we multiply it out, we get 1.375 beta D equals 6.125 beta L. So we can divide throughout by the 1.375 and we get this here. So when we divide this out, this is approximately equal to 4 beta L. Now the beta for D and the beta for L is made up of the mu times the C tox. Now the mu N and C tox, those are the same for both devices because they're both NMOS transistors. So this can be cancelled out. So what you're going to be left with here is the width upon the length for the drive device, which is the bottom one, is equal to the width of four times the width upon the length of the load device. So if we ensure that we keep the ratios of these width upon lengths to be this ratio of 1 to 4, then whenever we put a value of 4 volts into the input, we're going to get 0.5 volts from the output. So this is us finished the NMOS enhancement inverter. So you can see there's a bit more involved in uh, understanding this and designing it. But it has the disadvantages that the high voltage is only 4 volts, but we can sort that out by, instead of using an enhancement load, we can use a depletion load. So we'll go and have a wee look at that next. So thank you for listening. I'll get you in the next video. Goodbye.